Okay, so we're down to two weeks before the final, and I wanted to take some time to go over this classwork as I thought it was um, good prep. So at this point, you should be studying um, at least three times a night uh, for the final um, to achieve that passing grade. So starting with question number one, it says, what are the coordinates of the center and radius of a circle? So we're looking for this point right here, and we're looking for r. And the equation of a circle is set up so that we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r. So this number right here is the h, and this is the k, which is the coordinates for the center. Notice it says negative. So if this is a positive 3, we must have subtracted a negative 3 in order to change that. So the center is the opposite of a positive 3, negative 3. And since this is a negative 7 and the negative matches up as well, the y value of the center is 7. Now it's equal to 2, which is not a perfect square. Whoops, this is supposed to say r squared. So if we set this equal to r squared equal to 2, you can take the square root of both sides and r is equal to radical 2. So if it's a number that's not a perfect square, you simply just leave it as a radical. So the radius is radical 2. The next one, what is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a 14-sided polygon? Keyword is interior and sum, meaning what do they all add up to. So there's a formula, n minus 2 times 180. And some of you also have a table there where you have the number of sides and the sum of the interior angles. And you keep, just, you keep adding 180 until you get to your 14-sided. So plugging in the 14, 14 minus 2 is 12, and 12 times 180. Grab a calculator. 12 times 180 is 2160. So 2160 degrees. Make sure you include your unit. Number three, we have parallelogram ABCD below. It's not actually below, it's to the right. Diagonals AC and BD. Remember, in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other, so A to E is congruent to C to E, and DE is congruent to BE. They're not necessarily the same length, but the diagonals do bisect each other. So if AC, the whole diagonal, is 4x plus 6, so I'm going to make note, the whole diagonal, 4x plus 6, and A to E is 3x minus 1. So that means C to E is also 3x minus 1. We're simply just going to do the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. So it's going to be 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1 equals the whole 4x plus 6. Combining like terms, 3x and 3x is 6x. Negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2 equals 4x plus 6. Subtract the 4x to so combine like terms, don't have much room. When you subtract the 4x from 6x, you get 2x. And when you add the 2 over, you get 8. Divide by 2, and x is 4. Find the value of x, so we're done. Number 4 is another parallelogram question, so I would encourage you to draw a picture. And it says consecutive. And those are the angles that are right next to each other. So these two angles here would be consecutive. Um, these two angles here are consecutive. These two angles here are consecutive. And last, those two angles are consecutive. So it says the consecutive angles, so I'll put it here, 2x plus 10 and the other one, x minus 10. Now because in a parallelogram, your opposite sides are parallel, and then this would be our transversal, same side interior add up to 180. 
So it'll be 2x plus 10 plus x minus 10 equals 180 degrees. Well, positive 10, negative 10 cancel out. 2x and 3, uh, x is 3x. Divide by 3, the value of x, well, 18 divided by 3 is 6. Bring down your 0. We get x is equivalent to 60. So number 5, the diagonals of a rhombus. So another quadrilateral question. Rhombus has all four sides congruent. So it is a parallelogram with all four sides congruent. The diagonals are 8 and 10. So I'm going to say this diagonal is the longer one, so I'm going to say that's 10. And this pink, the shorter one, is 8. Remember they bisect each other because it's a parallelogram. So this would be, again, the pink was the 8, so 4 and 4. And then in the orange, these are congruent and split the 10 up into 5 and 5. Another property of the rhombus is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So we have a right triangle right here. This is a 4, 5, and then we're looking for x. It's not a triple, so we have to do um, 4 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. And a little hint is that it said we're going to round to the nearest tenth. If it was a triple, then the answer would be in terms of a whole number. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. When we add 16 and 25, we get 41. Then take the square root. And x equals, well, x was our side, so I guess we could set it up in terms of the answer. Our sign, I'm going to use the approximation symbol since we're rounding. The square root of 41, okay, so x equals 6.4031242237. To the nearest tenths place, that's the first place after the decimal. Because of that zero, the zero would leave the four alone. So it's approximately 6.4 centimeters. Number six, what is the volume of the cylinder shown to the right? Now the volume formula, you don't need to write that on your pink card. It's on the Common Core reference sheet. So you just have to look it up. And the volume formula is pi r squared h. So we need the radius and we need the height. Over in the picture, the 2.8 meters is the radius and the 3.7 is the height. So plugging it in or substituting pi times 2.8 squared times 3.7. You can type it all into one line. So pi 2.8 squared times 3.7. So the answer is 91.1313197. To the nearest cubic meter, that's the nearest whole number, and since to the right is a 1, the volume is going to stay at 91 cubic meters. We're not going to round up. So I'd pause the video for a second, and I would go back and add maybe some questions or examples to your pink sheet. I would add the rhombus, uh, what consecutive angles are in a parallelogram. Maybe you want to make note, if we haven't already, that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. And if you don't have this n minus 2 times 180, for the sum of the interior angles, you're going to want to add that. As we've mentioned, you're going to see every question that's on your final exam in the prep that we're giving you. So why don't you pause this, and then when you're finished, you can uh, start the video, and I'll go over the back. All right, number seven, the lengths of the bases of a trapezoid are represented by x plus 2 and 3x minus 8. Express the length of the median of the trapezoid in terms of x. Remember, the median is in the middle, and the median is connecting the midpoints, and that median, 
I don't believe we've written this down, so you're going to want to write it, is base 1 plus base 2 over 2. So we average the bases. So if we add up x plus 2 and 3x minus 8, 3x and x is 4x, negative 8 plus 2 is a negative 6. Divide that by 2 to divide each term. So 4x divided by 2 is 2x, negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. So if it's all algebraic to start as this was, the answer is going to be algebraic as well. Chords, B, S, and E are intersect at K and circle O. So let's draw a circle O, circle's name by the center. Now we haven't added any circle theorems to that um, pink cardstock sheet for the final, so you might want to do that. A chord goes from one side of the circle to the other. So here's BS, and here is ER. And it says they intersect at K. So it says that BK is 3, EK is 5, KR is 9, phi K R find KS, I'm going to call that X. So the theorem is the product of the segments of one chord. So let's look at BS. So that's a 3 and an X. So you multiply 3 times X. And then the other chord, we have a 5 and a 9. So then the four is 5 times 9. So 3X equals 5 times 9, 45, divided by 3. And X is 15. X was KS. So that means KS is 15. In the figure to the right, AC is parallel to DE, DB is 6, AD is 2, BC, this whole is 16, what is the length of EB? So it's good to draw the triangle separately, so we have this smaller triangle, I'm going to draw that to the left, left is 6, right is X, and then the larger triangle We know the whole side is 16, and this whole would be 2 plus 6, or 8. Now, these triangles are similar, okay? So we end up doing 6 to 8 equals x to 16. Cross multiplying, 6 times 16, we get 96. 8 times x, 8x, divide by 8, and x is... We're trying to find the length of EB. EB was the X, so my answer is EB is equal to 12. The length of the diagonal of a square. So if we draw a square, which has all four sides congruent and four right angles, the diagonal is 4 radical 2. So I'm going to draw that diagonal, 4 radical 2, and then we're looking at a right triangle. Now this is a special right triangle because the diagonal bisects the angles, so it's the 45, 45, 90. And I would add this to your study card. In the 45, 45, 90, the relationship is x, x, because it's isosceles, the sides are the same, and the hypotenuse is x radical 2. Well, if you have your answer in terms of a radical 2 for the hypotenuse, this x is the same as the two sides. So since this is 4 radical 2, each side is 4. So now the perimeter is not just 4 plus 4, but it's all sides of 4. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, or you could do um, 4 times 4, 4, 8, 12, 16. What is the image of the point T, negative 2, 3 after the composition of transformations? Remember, with this circle, okay, you do whatever is on the right first, and we do this second. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the point, and you'll have scrap graph paper. It's left. 1, 2, up, 1, 2, 3. 
So here's the point negative 2, 3. We're going to reflect it across the line y equals x. If you forget what that line is, you can just draw it on the calculator. So here's the y-axis, x-axis. When you reflect, it's going to be over here. So the rule for a reflection over y equals x takes a point and switches it. So if we have negative 2, 3, it becomes 3, negative 2, which makes sense. Over 1, 2, 3, down 2. So we we'll start negative 2, 3. When you reflect under y equals x, you get the point um, 3, negative 2. Now we're going to take that answer and rotate it 90 degrees. So our rotations are in this direction. So it goes from quadrant 4 up to quadrant 1. You need to label your quadrants on your reference sheet. So if you think of this becoming the y-axis, um, the rule for a rotation of 90 degrees I actually need to draw it. So our new answer was 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2. This is going to become the y-axis and this becomes the x. So in rotating it up, we're going to be right 2, up 3. So right 2, up 3. So the rule changes the y and the negative y, x. So 2, 3 is the correct answer. I always need to do it on graph paper. And distance, so this should be an easy one on your final. The distance formula uh, should be on your reference sheet. Distance d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So in your points, the, the 1 so this is x1, y1 just stands for point 1. And then x2, y2 just stands for point 2. So here's x2 and x1. We're going to subtract. So it's 4 minus a negative 2 squared plus 12 minus 4. Don't forget to carry the radical. When you subtract a negative, it turns it to positive. So it's the square root of 6 squared plus 12 minus 4, 8 squared. And that equals 36 and 64, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, so I would go back. I would definitely add the distance formula if you don't have that on your reference sheet. Transformation rules. You've got two weeks to fill out that study card. I would add the transformations. If you need to, we have, I know we haven't added this, but the 45, 45, 90, which we should also at this time maybe add the 30, 60, 90. And that relationship was opposite the 30x, hypotenuse 2x, and then opposite the 60, um, x radical 3. So I would add your special right triangles. You can add that to the right triangle section. And I would spend some time, because I know we haven't added any, definitely filling out some circle rules, and then add the median of a trapezoid, and I would add the picture. You can even add that same example. So take a moment and fill out some more of that study card as your final exam is in two weeks.